Hey guys, and welcome to this episode of Crowded Beaker. Uh, today we're going to be continuing our magical journey into the land of heat capacity and thermochemistry. And today we're dealing with problems that involve two substances. Um, if you have not seen the first in our series on heat capacity, you may want to go back and check that one out. Um, but in our first video, we learned that specific heat capacity is the amount of heat required to raise the temperature of one gram of a substance, one degree Celsius. And they have these different numbers which represent how many joules it would take to raise the temperature of one gram, one degree Celsius. And we also learned that it's kind of a periodic pattern based on molar mass. Generally, the, generally the lighter the element, this is the Dulong Petit Lab or law, and generally the lighter the element, the higher its heat capacity, and the heavier the element, the lower its heat capacity. And I'm moving fast here. We also learned the basic equation, which is Q equals heat capacity. Q is the quantity of heat times mass times the change in temperature. Not the actual temperature, just the change in temperature when something gets heated up or cooling down. Okay. And I also tried to introduce you to a little bit of a uh, check down list. So when you're sitting there doing your chemistry problems and it's three in the morning and it's getting dark, it's dark and you know you can't talk to anybody and you're all alone in the hallway with a candle or something, uh, you might want to have a plan. So you have to read these word problems and ask yourself some questions. Is there a temperature change in the word problem? And if so, are we talking about one substance or two substances? Is there a phase change? We'll get to those. Or is there both? We'll get to those. But right here, we're going to be doing this one. Whenever there's two substances, you need a CM delta T for one and a CM delta T for the other one, and we're gonna set them equal to zero. So let's get into it. I have some examples for us to try. And in our first example, uh, we have a question that looks like this. So just read it, 50 grams of an unknown metal. Okay, that's one substance. At 100 degrees is added to 50 grams sample of water at 20 degrees. After thermal equilibrium, we, uh, excuse me, after thermal equilibrium is reached, the final temperature is 34.1. What's the specific heat capacity of the metal? Which metal is it? So I can see I have two samples and some temperature changes going on. So what I should really do is take a moment and write down my equation that I'm going to use CM delta T plus CM delta T equals zero so that anybody reading your work will know what you're doing right off the bat. And then I wanna, basically I wanna assign one Let's call this the metal side and the water side. You could have done it the opposite way. It really doesn't matter as long as you pick one. And I don't know the heat capacity of the metal, so that's what I'm going to solve for. I'm going to leave that blank. I do know the mass of the metal, though, which is 50 grams. And the temperature change of the metal. So I have to do final minus initial, just like last time. Final temperature is 34. The initial temperature is 100. That's because we usually make them in a boiling water bath, so they get up to 100 degrees, which is something we can measure easily. And you might be thinking, well, Mr. Rudolph, that's going to be a negative value. Is that OK? And yes, it is OK, because the metal is going to cool down and it's going to lose its heat. The negative is just telling you that it's cooling. All right, the other side, 4.184 joules per gram degree is the heat capacity of water over there. The mass of the water is 50 grams also, and the temperature change of the water, it went down to 34.1, but it actually started at 20. And that's all going to be equal to zero. Okay. Now it gets a little annoying because you have to do a little math. I'm sorry about that. It's just, it is what it is. So let's collect these terms together. So C come and this together uh, works out to be 32.95. And if I multiply these three things together to simplify things, I get 29.50. Sorry about that. Okay. And that's going to be equal to zero. And just in case you need the help with that, I'm just going to show the next step. By subtracting both sides by this number, I get negative 2950 on the other side. 
And if I divide both sides by negative 3295, I get C equals a value of 0 0.895. And heat capacity is always given in joules per gram degree. Okay, now this is not exactly what's on my table as it might not be exactly when you do your calculations. Maybe I round it differently, um, but I get something that's really close to aluminum. And so I'm gonna pick that one because that's the closest one. There's really nothing else that's close, even on a bigger table. And the second thing I will say is for units sake, did you notice that I put units here? You always wanna put units in your original setup so that anyone reading it knows that you know, that they know, that you know what the units are. But when you do the calculations, it's okay to kind of leave them off. But of course your final answer needs to have a unit and heat capacity is in joules per gram degree. Okay, are you ready to try one yourself? So take a moment, similar question, and 70 grams of an unknown metal into 50 grams of water at 20. The final temperature in this case is 29.1. So take a moment, pause the video, and see if you can solve for the heat capacity of the metal. Okay, and if you were able to do it and come up with a value of ver something very close to 0.382 or 0.383 and figured out that it was zinc, then congratulations. That's another one over here on this chart. And um, so that's how you would do that kind of calculation. Let's do something slightly different. Take a look at this next question. And we'll have one more pause the video moment after this. Uh, a 100 gram sample of lead heated to 100 degrees Celsius was added to a 50 gram sample of water at 22. Assuming no heat loss to the surroundings, what would be the final temperature? Okay, this may be the most difficult one of these that you will see although there are some more difficult ones if you add more substances. But check this out. I definitely see a temperature change because I want to find a final temperature and I have two substances. So I'm really dealing with the same equation. One's going to be negative, one's going to be positive, and they'll add to zero. But this time they tell me it's lead. So I want to know, let's assign this to the lead side, PB, and let's do the water side there. And I actually know what the heat capacity of lead, which is 0.128. So 0 0.128 is my heat capacity. The mass of the lead was 100. And the temperature change of lead, see, this is the difficult part. I don't know what the final temperature is. I have to find that. So since I don't know what T final is, I'm just going to put in a TF. But I do know it started at 100, so let's put that in. And then we got to do the water side, 4.184 joules per gram degree. And the mass of the water is 50. And the temperature change, again, I don't know what that is. So I have to put in the TF and the 22 degrees Celsius and set that equal to zero. Okay, it gets a little long sometimes plugging in all the numbers. But then we have to start kind of messing with it and kind of simplifying it. So let's collect these two terms and these two terms. And I get... 12.8 TF minus 100 plus 209.2 TF minus 22 equals zero. So it's getting a little nicer, but here we have to do uh, um, the thing we have to do in math class all the time where we have to distribute and collect like terms. Um, don't run away screaming. I'm sorry. That's that's just what we got to do. But here's, what we, here's, here's how we do it. We're going to say this is distribute this 12.8 TFs. We're still finding those. And 1280 plus 209.2 TFs minus, because that's my variable, 4602 still equal to zero. Don't try not to forget that pesky little zero. It likes to disappear on us sometimes. All right, now I'm going to collect some like terms, these two and these two. So I'm going to get 222 exactly TFs minus 58.52, oh, 82, sorry about that, equals zero. And then I'm gonna add that to both sides, 222 TFs equals 58.82. 
And by dividing both sides by 222, I get 26.49, let's just say 26.5 degrees Celsius. So the water started at 22 and only went up to 26.5. But that's partly because lead has such a low heat capacity. It's not going to carry much heat with it. Um, so it doesn't heat up the water very much at all. Okay, that was a tough one. But I prepared one for you to try in case you're so inclined. Take a look at example four. Again, two substances and refining the final temperature. Take a moment and pause the video if you like and see if you can find this answer. Okay, if you attempted this problem, congratulations on being an intrepid chemist working for mastery. And if you got an answer of 38.0 degrees Celsius, congratulations. Great job. And this final temperature is higher than the lead one because aluminum has such a, a higher heat capacity. And here's an overall a concept. The higher the heat capacity of a metal, the more it's going to raise the temperature of the water when it's put in there. And the lower the heat capacity of the metal, you're going to get a lower temperature change for that water when you're doing your calorimetry experiments. Okay, there you have it. A couple of more difficult examples. If you have any suggestions of things you'd like me to solve, feel free to send them to me or put them in the comments. Uh, and in the meantime, happy solving and have a great day.